Welcome back to my Triangle Strategy Hard New Game Plus LCC, here's Chapter 13. This version of Chapter 13 shares its reputation with Chapter 5 for being an incredibly I easy to skip map. Like Chapter 6, the goal of this here. chapter is simply to have the target like area be unoccupied by any enemy units. Unlike Chapter 6, there's only one enemy in the target area this time, and it's incredibly easy to get him out of there without even having to resort to combat. By boosting Cog's movement enough with twofold turn and fleet footed, and warping him in with light wave, he's able to simply walk up in front of the boss, and then switch places with the one enemy in the target area. So that's going to be Chapter 13 completed in two turns, let's move on to Chapter 14. How about this? Chapter 14 is another kill boss map, except that this time, there's actually two bosses, meaning that optimizing the boss kill isn't exactly as straightforward as usual. Erika and Thalos usually start off the map by running off in opposite directions, so first we need to have Kohog bring Thalos closer in order to trigger their AI to become aggressive. Well Another thing that we have to deal with in this chapter is the amount of force deploys that we're given. Roland and Sereno are fine enough for boss killing, but Milo isn't exactly well known for her damage. The boss kill is tight enough that her tiny bit of chip damage does actually end up mattering, but I still would have rather undeployed her and saved the turn while getting more of those juicy lone wolf bonuses. <laughs> now what to do? Think you can catch me? You, you pay. You poor thing. My turn. After light waving in Sarinoa to take advantage of his pursuit stance, Avlora is going to remind us that she actually has other attacks besides Risky Maneuver and Bloody Cross, as she triggers a follow-up attack on both the bosses using no escape. Now, I don't know what's up with these enemies AI, as they choose not to attack any of our allies even though they could easily kill either of Kohog or Roland, but I sure am thankful that they don't, as it would have been a lot more troublesome to keep everyone alive if they did. While Kohog's mainly been making use of his warp skills throughout the playthrough, he's finally going to pull out another one of his tricks here, in due course, a delayed AoE attack that does damage proportional to an enemy's max HP, making it perfect for a boss kill like this, as long as we can get it to hit both Erika and Thalys. Giovanna moves in to complete our formation to box in Thalys, which when combined with the movement diva from No Escape and the Ice Terrain, checkmates Thalys into catching Erika in the explosion of in due course. By triggering Sereno's counterattack, Thalys is knocked exactly into lethal range to die to the time bomb, allowing us to complete chapter 14 in 8 turns. Let's move on to chapter 15. There comes a point in every LTCer's life where they realize they have to resort to an incredibly unreliable strategy in order to save a turn, and in this case, that's chapter 15. This is mainly due to how far away Patrius starts, and he runs away even further if you let his turn come around, so we have to use weaker skills like Rush so that we can get in position for a follow-up attack, and also equip dare. speed accessories instead of strength to stop him from running away. Already you saw that Roland had to get a lucky crit on that Rush, but now we also have to get a Vlor in and get another random crit on this risky maneuver. It really sucks that we have to resort to this, but we simply don't have the QP to use Critical Blow when we have to actually get close enough to Patria and charge up 4 dragons to get the kill. With enough luck on our side, that's going to be chapter 15 completed in 3 turns. My chance. 